the key elements are summarized as easy nearby San Hong Silu Kuang. So firstly, the soup has to be crystal clear. I ended my last video with the regret of not being able to visit a noodle shop due to temporary COVID restrictions. But that ain't gonna stop me and my noodle theme. For the past few weeks, I've been talking about local Suzhou cuisine. So allow me to switch things up and show you guys foods and noodles from another corner of China, the northwestern corner. I'm talking about the beef noodles of Lanzhou. So y'all remember this place? The PCP noodle shop? Oh wait, back in downtown Suzhou for more noodles. But this time, not local Suzhou noodles. We're here for Lanzhou's most famous type of noodles, the Lanzhou Lamian or Lanzhou Ramen. Oops, did I say Lanzhou Lamian? Now oh, please forgive me. I mean, there are just so many Lanzhou Lamian stores across China. Uh, the term's been burned into my mind and it just rolls off the tongue. The term Lanzhou Lamian is unacceptable to Lanzhou locals, but the compound still prevails despite objections because Lanzhou Lamian has become one of the few foods that truly transcends culinary cultural divides across regions. It is also widely held as one of the kings of Chinese fast food. This characterization naturally comes with the related labels, like low price and low quality. People joke that if the Lanzhou noodle soup is too hot, don't blow on it because the beef slices are cut so thin, the blown air might blow the beef away. Ha ha ha! If you find that funny, hit that like! Lanzhou folks probably don't find that funny. Sorry! For this type of uh, Lanzhou noodle soup in question, the real term is Lanzhou noodle mian or Lanzhou beef noodles. Uh, it's a uh, source of both pain and pride for the Lanzhou folks. Maybe I'll talk more about this in the description section uh, and later videos. But the brand we're visiting today is actually from uh, Shanghai and the owner's not even from uh, Lanzhou uh, but he does hail from uh, elsewhere in Jiangsu province and he is serious enough to uh, name his brand Chen Xianggui Niu Rou Mian in accordance with the real deal. Let me preface by saying that I've never been to Lanzhou so I couldn't tell you what is the real real deal and we are eating at a fast food chain. Though I can say that the difference is noticeable compared to the common Lanzhou Lamian eatery. In general, Lanzhou noodle soup remains a thrifty repast, but similar to how burgers have gone gourmet, the market for premium Euromian is growing in tandem with the growth of the Chinese economy and increase in discretionary spending among ordinary folks. Today, pricier chains are popping up, like this brand here. The higher price does translate into higher quality. Yes, there are beef slices impervious to blown air, but I should note that while actual beef slices are important, the sole of the bowl is the beef stock, which is why the broth is listed first and foremost in a five-part phrase about the essences of Lanzhou Ni Rou Mian, while the meat itself is not even mentioned. And unlike Tang Kachu Ramen broth, which is typically meaty and cloudy, Lanzhou noodle broth is meaty but clear. A bowl of Lanzhou Niu Rou Mian is like a colorful tapestry of wisdom. The key elements are summarized as easy, nearby, San Hong Silu Kuang. So firstly, the soup has to be crystal clear. The clarity comes from skimming off particles that cause turbidity. This chain might use other techniques, but as some traditional Lanzhou shops, bloody water previously used for rinsing raw meat is added to the boiling beef stock. When heated, hemoglobin in the bloody water coagulates, absorbing suspended particles during the process and then turning into skimmable froth. Visiting a store early during the day is advisable too because broth continuously simmered for prolonged duration tends to turn hazy. Which is why some old school Lanzhou noodle shops only open for breakfast and lunch. Also I've read. Far away here in Suzhou, hardcore noodle fans also insist on early noodles, though for a slightly different reason. They maintain that water used for cooking noodles is purest when a shop opens because the pot hasn't been contaminated by noodles cooked before. This is emphasized because pseudo noodle soups are more delicate in flavor and texture, so extraneous substances like flour should be minimized. That kind of dainty elegance is a different kind of joy compared with the spirited beefiness of Lanzhou Ni Rou Mian. Our soups are beefy indeed. So firstly, the soup has to be crystal clear. And second, the radish has to be 15 and white. Third, the chili oil has to be robust and red. Fourthly, the garlic boat and coriander have to be fresh and green. And lastly, the noodles, bright and yellow. 
In one bowl, we forgo the third essence, as in chili, so we can focus on just the broth. The soup does look rather clear, yet the beef flavor is also abundantly clear. Bold, beefy, boisterous. This holds true even in our other bowl with chili and pickled vegetables. I don't doubt the existence of artificial elements in the broth, but I think there's also some degree of genuine soup making, and perhaps extra tallow and or marrow as well. My mouth has been coated with a fragrant film of grease. Feels like I just applied brisket flavored lip balm. This deliciousness is derived from more than just beef. Different shops rely on different tricks. Other than beef or yak meat and bone, a plethora of spices would be used. There are common items like black cardamom and fennel, then there are herbs whose names I don't know how to pronounce. Some might toss in beef or lamb liver, or even whole free range chicken, or add chicken stock, etc. Whatever techniques they employ here, I'm hooked. As a matter of fact, the noodle soups are so delish, we will choose to get more the next day. Yep, same theme, different bowl in the next video. 再见!